Okay, uh, this is a, a very simple design. Uh, it's just a design example I wanted to show you. Um, this is a very versatile little um, anti-aircraft unit. It has an RTG, so it can it can generate its own power over time, even if it runs out while it's running. It'll slowly regenerate a big battery. Um, it has it's based around a couple of these uh, um, um, structural panels here. Uh, it has a, uh, a couple armor plates of mine. Uh, the armor plates are there simply for safety. These guns, when placed side by side, will actually sometimes accidentally shoot and clip one another, so you don't want that happening. What it'll do is it will actually swing around. If an, if an air target is flying overhead, it will actually swing the barrel around, and it will actually see this armor perfectly um, as a barrier, as its own vessel. So basically, it's not going to kill, it's not going to shoot itself, but it will reduce the amount uh, of incidents where you're going to actually have uh, bullets uh, clipping your own vessel. Um, so that's why the armor armor plates are in the middle. It's a little guy. That's the IFF tag. So I've redesigned the IFF tag. I just made that today. Um, I made it in a couple hours and uh, put it in there. Um, this little guy determines if you're on the blue side or the red side. So you got to choose a side. Um, so if you're on a hostile, uh, if you're hostile to one another, they would you'd have different IFF tags. Um, no, I don't have you know multitudes of IFF. That, you know I don't anticipate when I was creating the mod originally that there would be uh, you know five sides to a conflict. Uh, multiplayer is still quite a ways away, and as I mentioned in the thread, I had I had no support ideas for multiplayer whatsoever. Um, when multiplayer comes out, I'll reevaluate the mod and we'll see what can be done. So when it's released in the first edition, or first release of the of the mod, you're going to get a turret that rotates and shoots. You're not going to get a turret with an IVA or nothing like that. I haven't gotten anywhere near doing that yet. So um, unless you guys want to wait till Christmas of December right, of, of, uh, of uh, 2014, uh, we're going to have to put off a few of the features that everybody would expect to have with a you know a turret or something like that. Uh, HE is a high explosive that detonates when it actually hits something. Um, not very good at penetrating hard targets because of course you need to penetrate a target before you can actually explode and do damage. So this does a lot of damage if it can penetrate. Uh, so against soft targets or unarmored targets or, you know, in a wide open field, it might have some splash damage against lightly armored things. Uh, a very light plane or a Kerbal standing on the ground would be blown away by uh, this round hitting beside him. Uh, armor uh, incendiary uh, basically sets things on fire. So if you hit another part, it will set that part on fire. Um, it has a better chance of setting it on fire over the long run. Um, if you get a smoldering piece of, you know, flaming uh, debris inside the part after penetrating, it, it has a good chance of catching on fire. If there's fuel in there, if there's other things in there that might like explode like a, an ordinance, it will increase the chances of causing a fire and then exploding, uh, increasing the chances of exploding as well. Um, Again, incendiary rounds are not made to penetrate, so they, they, they penetrate poorly. Um, they also don't explode uh, per se. They explode, but they kind of just explode a flame. They, they, they spread a fire. They don't um, explode with the concussive, for concussive force of a high explosive round. So uh, you're not going to get much splash damage from it, but it will set things on fire. Even the ground, if it hits the ground, it will make a fire there. Um, Armor piercing. Armor piercing will pierce armor. Uh, it will not do tons of structural damage. It will make a hole. Uh, when it gets to the other side, it'll do some damage in there. It might fragment. It might have a small explosive charge, but it's not going to blow something completely apart. If you see any armor piercing rounds, even stuff that are made to kill tanks, they have a little hole that'll be made here. You look inside the tank and there's a whole bunch of splash damage and, and guys are dead and you know everything's like uh, in a good area inside's all burned up. So the armor piercing rounds will penetrate. They don't necessarily do the most structural damage. Um, if you were firing this at a large target, um, the structure of the target is not going to be destroyed as much as a high explosive charge would do. Okay, um, these are all the parts that are going to come with it. Uh, so we have the uh, circular or the fuselage protection plate. 
We have the tub, the armored tub for big ground vehicles. We have this, um, again it's a little bit difficult to uh, angle, but uh, we have this uh, hollowed um, cockpit protector, or basically an APC kind of uh, um, protection um, plate, and I could mount on the top of here. I've done that in other vehicles that I've released on the thread pictures. Um, this is a standard armor plate. That's the first armor plate I ever made. This is the long armor plate. Um, maybe like a side skirt or something like that. I'm, I'm sure you guys will come up with creative ways to use it. Um, this is an in-wing or an in-hull uh, barrel. Uh, so this will be either like a machine gun or a uh, uh, heavy machine gun barrel. This is uh, the 30 cal, uh, 30 cal machine gun. It has a targeter on it. If we go on the back side, it has the targeter built into it right here. And there are keys to actually set the targeter. Um, that's the only gun that has a targeter built into it right now. Uh, this is the auto air turret, as I mentioned before. This is the 30 millimeter uh, cannon. You can change the type of round you want to use on any of these. The lead for the gun and the type of ammo. Uh, this is the CIWS for the big ships. Uh, not only does this is this is the CIWS fire faster than this little gun down here and also have larger rounds, it can actually shoot down missiles. So that's another benefit of that. This is the tank turret turret. And up here we have the biggest of them all for now. And this one is the battleship turret. Double mount. Uh, 14 inch guns. I didn't jump right to the biggest guns because I mean I want to have something to expand to later, right? This is a magazine for the battleship gun. And you can see 14 inch ammo. You can it can hold up to uh, 46 rounds. I gotta I gotta round that off later. It can hold up to 46 rounds. You can change the fill percent. So if you want to only take 50 percent of this, you can set it to 50 percent. So then it would take you know 23 rounds. Okay, because you have to consider that this will be very heavy when you uh, when you launch it. Um, the smallest ammo box smallest ammo box, 7.62 millimeter rounds, uh, can hold 2,700 rounds. Now you think that's a lot of rounds, but that's like bigger than a Kerbal. <laughs> it's a pretty big box, so I didn't mess around with the box sizes. There's a, there's an equation in there that'll actually guesstimate how much how many rounds of a given caliber should fit in the box. I'm not going to tell you that it's 100% mathematically sound. I'm telling you that it, it will generally make sense. I'm going to tune it a little bit better too. So the uh, 7.62, the 30 cal, you're going to see the 30 cal is roughly a 7.62, but with a bigger cartridge. So it has a slightly less capacity. Um, 50 cal, a lot less capacity. Uh, 30 millimeter, a lot less capacity. And 5 inch for the, for the tank, nothing. Okay, because it exceeds the max dimension, so you just can't fit a tank round in there. Um, so we can leave that like that. The medium box. The medium box can take 30 millimeter rounds. It can take 5 inch rounds. So it can hold 79 rounds for the tank. That might seem like a lot. Um, so I'm going to double check the math on that. I'm pretty sure that it would probably be, you know, in the 30 range. Uh, so I'm going to have to check the math on that. Anyway, um, for the biggest box, you're gonna have it'll be able to take. Uh, it won't be able to hold the battleship rounds. It's just not thick enough. Um, and the ammo for five minutes for the tank, you can hold 630 rounds for the tank in that box. You can put this on the back of a vehicle and basically, you know, rearm it from the other vehicle. That works. Um, the other thing here is the hard points, which shows the. Um, ordinance. So what you want to do is just in order. You want to choose your warhead, so it's hard to read here. I'll put it on the black. So incendiary, incendiary armor piercing or high explosive uh, bombs. So if you want to take armor piercing, you choose armor piercing. The next option is the ordnance that you want to take. So the 125 pound bomb, and then you load it. 
Okay. And then when you want to change it, you can change your uh, armor piercing. You can take high explosive. You could take a 2,000 pound. Or we can have high explosive torpedo. And torpedoes do work. You can drop them from a plane, or you can launch them from a boat. As long as the orientation of the cockpit's correct to KSP, it'll work. Um, so we can take incendiary 500 pound cluster bomb. The cluster bomb and the 2,000 pound bomb use the same, and the tall boy for now, uses the same um, model that I made. So you'll see the tall boy. Look at the tall boy. <laughs> the tall boy. <laughs> the tall boy is the biggest bomb here. And yes, it's right to scale. Um, so it's accurately scaled. That that would just hammer something. So yes, basically any part it hits will destroy a part. That part um, causes splash damage, a huge radius. So that's that's a pretty powerful bomb. Um, there are bigger bombs, but that's the that's a pretty big bomb. In any case, that's most of the Anyways, guys, this is just a basic overview. Hope you liked it. With the CIWS on the, on the uh, boat, a bombing runs are going to be a challenge because um, essentially you're going to get clobbered. <laughs> and you're going to be dead before you can actually drop a bomb. So I'm just going to show you, and I'm going to get killed here, but I'm going to show you how effective the defense is. Um, and we'll try to approach from the side of the with the CIWS on it, and uh, see what happens. So we can see some tracer rounds coming up. Of course, I have the tracer rounds visible from the front. They're just a particle effect. So. Um, Now these are um, references for debugging. They're not going to be. So I've taken a few hits already. So getting in closer than say seven or eight hundred meters seems to be a problem. I don't know if I tuned the the lead on those properly enough. In any case, it gives you something to worry about. If I come at the ship from the from behind, um, you're going to notice that only one gun is firing now. That's because the other the, the, the CIWS on the front of the ship doesn't have uh, a line of sight to, to me. So this is a smaller gun hitting me. I'm not too worried about the smaller gun because it's not as powerful as. However, getting away from uh, getting oh these are just indicators to know that and that was that <laughs> it's difficult to come in and actually do a strike mission on this because the lag spikes crazy. This is like 300 parts, and the physics that has to calculate on all these parts is insane. Plus the um, routines running for these um, guns, uh, you know, it, it can't have vessels that number, you know, 300 to 400. It's just way too many um, parts for everything to kind of jump through. So um, uh, I'll show you another example. Uh, this time I'm going to leave the IFF um, targeter switch to friendly, and I'll see if I can actually get a hit with something or some guns on this and see what we can do to it. Um, let's see here. So once we have our turret turned, we can then fire. And you can see there's a little bit of damage. <laughs> Let's go over here, 
take a look. Now, of course, they're not going to just take this sitting down, right? They're going to actually start shooting back. Now, it did some serious damage to this thing. Um, it's not... Oh, it's not out. It's not out for the count. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll jump back to my ship, and let's play it fair a little bit. Let's say that they start firing back at us. And I'm going to turn the IFF blue on. So it's firing at us. This could get dangerous if they if it manages to blow through. Uh, but we're not going to let them get to that. <laughs> so I don't think they're going to be able to penetrate this. Oh, they are! Oh no! So let's close in a little bit on this and see what we've done. Now you're going to see these two parts here are yellow. Now why are they yellow? Um, if you go over them, they're always going to be yellow now when you go over them. Those are damaged. Those have been penetrated. Um, if they were floating parts, which they are, they would be sunk. Um, so uh, if uh, you had enough of those, of course, the ship would tip over and be and sink. So, um, luckily, with the 30 millimeter um, CIWS cannon, uh, they didn't have a chance to get through all these parts because simply <clears throat> it's not designed to take out, um, you know, moderately armed warships uh, or armored warships, sorry. Um, it is designed for anti-aircraft, uh, primarily anti-missile, too. So. Uh, what we're seeing here is uh, it is, after a number of rounds, being able to chew through parts of this ship, which is impressive to say the least. So looking at this we can see um, there was some serious damage done here. This thing is pretty fast, uh, especially for something that totes, totes a big gun like this. Too high. A little bit too high. Got it. So that was uh, 45 5 inch rounds against destroyer. Um, high explosive rounds. As our last example, I guess we can take a nose dive into this thing at about 65. 60. That's about all she wrote. See you later, guys.